What is he? Oh no, it's Ryan Roth Enterprise. I love to sing her about the moon and the June and the spring. I love to sing her about a sky of blue or a tea for two. Hello everybody, my name is Rich of Ragaroth Enterprises, and welcome to my channel. I gotta keep going with the April Fool's openings and closings. But, um, so I haven't done a Fire Emblem Warriors video in a while. It has, it has been some time. I think it's been, like, since October or September, maybe? Like, maybe late September? Um, for those that may, may have seen that one, uh, you probably, you might remember that I wasn't exactly too happy with the game at that point. I was very disappointed with the roster and the clones and I guess you know with the lack of games they're representing so I was kind of going into it with kind of a more uh, disheartened feeling as opposed to an excited feeling of hype when I was gonna get the game um, however it's been I guess the game's been out for you know a few months now maybe actually probably a little bit more almost maybe half a year now and um, basically all the three DLC packs have come out we don't know if there's gonna be more so I guess I just wanted to do kind of, not really a review, but kind of how I guess I was feeling about the game versus then, you know, I guess a little pre-release in America at least. So, you know, I, I, didn't, I was able to get some gameplay because they did recently add in the ability to capture some footage. Unfortunately, uh, because, you know, Nintendo, you know, they, they, they have to take little baby steps. You can only get like 30 seconds of footage, so... I apologize if it's spliced up a lot, and I figured I'd get it most of, you know, mostly the DLC characters, more so the recent ones. So now, you know, when the game came out, you know, yeah, I was bummed out with the roster and stuff. However, I ultimately was still really enjoying it. Um, the gameplay was fun. I mean, you know, Dynasty Wars, it's like, I'm not really a Dynasty Wars fan, but if I like kind of, I guess, the theme or content of whatever the spinoff is, I usually tend to really like it. Um, it, it's kind of like with the Lego games. Like, if you're into what the said Lego game is based off of Batman, Marvel, Star Wars, whatever, you know, you'll probably be more into it as opposed to if it's just kind of something you're not into or just sort of the regular dinosaurs slash Lego um, theme. Uh, I think overall, gameplay wise, I might like it more than Hyrule Warriors. I think it's a lot more. Um, Fast, I I I, I, li I like that we can change characters um, on the fly when we pick our teams. I mean, yeah, like High Rewards Legends did add that. I guess the you know the original Wii. I guess I'm talking about the original Wii U version. I know that that point's totally moot because High Rewards Definitive Edition is coming out. Um, I do like the whole use of the weapon triangle. I think you know I think I think this is maybe one of the most strategic. Um, Dynasty Warriors games ever. I mean, yeah, it's like still overall, you know, you're just mowing down enemies and stuff. But there is a little more strategy to it. The weapon triangle with sending certain characters to certain locations so, you know, you don't lose. And, uh, you know, the, you know, the pair-ups, I think the pair-up is pretty cool. You know, it's a neat... You know, they really integrated a lot of cool things from Fire Emblem over into um, in this game. Kind of just like how, you know, Hyrule Warriors did. You know what? I don't know. I actually don't know which one I'd like better of the two. It's still... It is hard for me to decide, but there are definitely things I like better about Fire Emblem Warriors. It helps I am a little bit more of a Fire Emblem fan these days than a Zelda fan. Um, and I do think that, well, alright. Yeah, there are some clones, and that really sucks. You know, and they do have, like, unique specials, which is cool. You know, at the very least, they're kind of, I guess, sort of like a... Think how Falco or Luigi... Maybe Roy were in, you know, Smash Brothers. You know, they have some, they're mostly clones, but they have some differences in some of their move sets. I guess in this case, they have unique final smashes. I think because of this, um, I feel like mo um, I have seen some people say that every character is pretty much viable. Um, there aren't characters that are, you know, clearly better than others, or I guess I should say maybe clearly worse, because I think there are characters that are better than others. But you know, everyone feels useful in some way. And the thing is, it's like. You know, with, with a lot of the clones, like, you know, one character will be someone I clearly like, and the other one will probably be someone I'm not that crazy about. For instance, you know, I really like Leo, but I'm not really a fan of Elise. So it's like, I guess it's not really that big of a deal that they're clones of each other, because I'm only really interested in one anyway. I guess it would just be nice to see what, you know, they could have both done differently, especially, you know, more so for Leo. And, like, you know, I love Takumi, 
but I'm not really a fan of Sakura, and while I don't dislike Anna, I'm not, you know, super crazy about it either. Funnily enough, I've, I haven't even unlocked her yet, <laughs> so yeah. Um, I mean, it is tough because I love Takumi and I love Niles, but eh, I don't know. It does suck, but I guess it's like actually, it's a case where actually playing the game, it, it, it doesn't feel as serious, you know, as back when we were just kind of getting videos and getting news. It, it's a lot better when you're actually playing it, I feel like. And uh, I do really like how there's a performance mode and a quality mode. I think I usually do performance mode. I usually do performance mode. I think sometimes I might kind of back off a bit because I think it does make the game crash sometimes, which kind of sucks. But I think I guess I play the game port more portably now anyway, and I think it's kind of locked into quality mode. Yeah, I because th I don't think I don't think it's, it can be 60 frames frames per second um, on handheld. I, I could be wrong about that. And I think the story mode was okay. I mean, I feel like you know the the. The villains didn't get that much of a presence, and I feel like it was, you know, it was sort of obvious, you know, what was going on. I was just kind of disappointed that, you know, with how Darius was treated, you know, in a way, because I actually, I actually like Darius a lot more than, um, Leanna and, oh my god, I, I, I forget, the, how do I forget the guy's name? I use the guy more. Um, the twins, we'll just call them the twins. And I do like the kind of the, uh, the badge system, if you want to call it that. I, I, I forget what it's called in this game. Um is back from Hyrule Warriors in this. I mean, it does kind of suck that you can't just learn new moves as you level up, well, you know, just kind of a shame. I, I do like that they kept the promotion thing. And I, I, I like that, you know, everyone gets an alternate costume uh, and, and, and that you can choose between the costumes. Uh, like, you know, if, if you don't like how the promoted version looks, you can just, you know, use the default version with, you know, the new stats and new moves that you get from the promotion. I do like that well, I, I, I do think it is a little lame that not everyone has kind of a support combo, and there's only one support combo. I mean, I understand, and I actually I think the one or two I got, I actually think is probably a bit more uh, in-depth than I think some of the support combos from the actual games. And I like that they are fully voiced, so I guess that's kind of why. Um, and history mode is really cool. I think that's kind of where, you know, more of the game play egg it goes into. You know, and that's where you unlock, you know, like Lynn and, Sel and Celica and then, Mil you know, the all alternate versions of Corn and Robin that you don't start off with. But, yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I like really everything about it. I just wish there were, you know, there were more clones. Uh, I I wish, you know, the characters weren't, you know, as cloned as much and that more games represented. So now, all right, so now with the DLC, you know, there were a lot of characters I wanted that, that, that in the DLC that, you know, weren't in at launch, and I was really mad about that. I am really happy they're finally out. I think the game roster is much better with like with you know with my girl Tharja, Navar, Niles. Um, I really like how Azra and Obro turned out. Minerva is awesome to have. Um, Lind isn't someone I really particularly cared for, but I guess she you know she does have a neat move set. Um, Owain's neat. Um, you know my favorite Final Awakening character, but I understand why you made it. Um, Olivia, I think it was kind of a dumb choice. But um, I, I guess her moveset turned out okay, and I know she's kind of a popular character too. I, I just really think they needed more villains. I really hate that like none of the villains are really playable. You, know, you could, I, I actually wouldn't mind if Darius was 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 playable and just a clone, because it's like I like him more than the other two. <laughs> and, you know, it really sucks that the, you know the three warlocks aren't play. I would have really liked to play as Iago, especially because you can play as him in Awake in a yeah in Fates. You know, I, I also think it's kind of dumb that, you know, we, we can't even get, like, Wallhard in the game. You know, he's probably my favorite villain from three games, or, or Camus. You know, especially because we don't really have a, um, a Lance Cavalier character. Um, however, you know, the biggest ball kicker, though, is, you know, we kind of thought that the reason that there were clones in the, in the, in the, in the base game was that they were just trying to fit as many characters as they could in the base game. Um, and with some, time, with some time constraints, they just couldn't make them unique. And we thought, oh, the, all the DLC characters will be unique because, you know, they actually have time to work on them. You know, they, they want to make us pay extra for, for more clones and all that, right? Uh, well, uh, apparently they would. Um, it turns out that Niles was still a clone of Takumi and, um, you know, the other two archers. You know, again, though, he had, you know, he, he had different specials. Um, which I'm like, okay, you know, he was an NPC. His moveset was kind of already made. I can kind of get that. So then, um, then, you know, with Navarre and Minerva, um, 
Navarre wound up being, still being a Lin clone. You know, I guess this was a bit more annoying, but I guess we kind of expected it with what happened with Miles because we figured there'd maybe be a little more ways to make Navarre different because I think it's a little easier to find ways to make a sword user more unique from an art from an archer, especially because there's only one other sword user using that moveset, but, you know, of course, of course not. You know, they just couldn't do it. And then, of course, Minerva, who, you know, wasn't even in the game at all. We thought, oh, they, you know, they'll come up with a unique moveset. I mean, you know, because uh, Camilla uses magic and stuff. Minerva, Minerva doesn't really use that. Nope. Still the same moveset, you know, just different specials, of course. You know, th that was, I think, that was, I think, where it really got annoying. Then, you know, people's standards, you know, and then, of course, Lynn was the only unique character, but I feel like she was the least requested. So you seriously made the least requested character the unique one, and the other two, the clones. Very backwards thinking, in my opinion. Like, I, I, the, the first pack, you know, at least had two unique characters, and I feel like, you know, as much as I love Niles, Azra and Obro are probably a bit more popular than him. So then, of course, we get to the Awakening Pack. We're like, no, they're not going to make Tharja a clone. She's a Dark Mage. You know, they, they, they could just make her whole moveset in Dark-based. Nope. She was a clone of Robin. And I, I was I was pretty pretty upset about that. Very upset about that. I, I, I cannot believe they made such a, you know, popular character that we had to wait a while for. One of my favorite characters, a freaking clone. All they literally just had to do is make a purely dark elemental based moveset i mean they've done that before they basically did that with sia in um hyrule warriors you know just basically take sia just take away the whip but have her kind of fight like lana with you know the spells and all and you got tharja basically but nope 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 well, you know they, they they couldn't bother um though the one plus side with tharja um someone uh, people actually discovered that after she came out and you know they got her promoted that one of her, I think it was one or two of her um, strong attacks, like, you know, the I think the last one you get, is actually unique from Robin's. She casts um, the, the dark uh, the dark spell Goetia, I guess I'm saying that right, instead of, um, I want to say, I think, I want to say Robin does, like, Rex Caliber as his strong six. So that, I'm like, all right, I can at least appreciate that. They at least took a little bit of extra effort with Tharja, a little bit, and, um... I think the one before might be slightly unique. I, I don't know about that. I, I kind of think it, when I when I when I played as Renegade, it seemed like it was just the same. But I, I do appreciate they at least took that little bit of effort. And then of course, Owain was a clone, as we kind of expected anyway. However, it's kind of awkward seeing him just use Realm as el elements, and then for his specials, he turns his sword in like a dark one and a light one. I don't know how you could have made a unique move set out of that. I I just. And then, of course, once again, I feel like Olivia, the least requested character, is the unique one. <laughs> so, yeah, I, it's like, you know, when it was still getting good, there still ought to be some crappy stuff with it. I think that was very disappointing and very lazy on their part. It definitely, and I feel like I don't like that they were very, they weren't very upfront with it because all the characters were revealed via magazine scans. And, of course, the pictures they showed of them were just kind of them doing their specials. Which, of course, you know, I'm like, oh, they're, they're something different. But, you know, it was just, they were just catching the things that were unique. Yeah, I, I don't understand what happened there. I, I don't know, is their budget really that low? Did they just not care? I mean, I guess with Hyrule Warriors, the DLC characters were much more sparse. So that's why they had more time to work on them. I don't know, maybe they had a bit more budget with Hyrule Warriors. Because, um, you know, it's Zelda, it's a, little, it's a little more higher end than Fire Emblem. You know, as, as, even though Fire Emblem is much bigger than it used to be. And I really think it is just dumb. They still refuse to add characters like Roy and Ike. I, I don't know. There could. I think people have found that there's uh, data for four more characters in the in the files. But um, yeah. So overall, I am pleased with the game. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed. I really think it would be. I don't want to say perfect, but I think it would be so much better if at least every character, or there is, you know, or more so, every character. Like, almost every character was had their own moveset. And I think if just more games were represented, I just think it was very stupid of them to kind of just focus on three games. I understand that Awakening and Fates, you know, are kind of the two big Fire Emblem games. And I love Awakening and Fates. Don't get me wrong. This is not me hating on them. A lot of people hate on, like, Fates and stuff and even Awakening. I, I like them, but they're, they're, they're good games. They have characters I love. It's not nothing against them. Shadow Dragon is not really one I'm crazy about, but I, I understand it's the original game. They had to give it some love, and you know, one of my favorite farm characters, Navarre, is from it, and because of that, he did get in, which I'm grateful for, even though he is a clone. But I'm just hoping either A, they add some more DLC, or they just kind of focus on some other games. Even if it's not, like, 
All right, even if it's not Ike and Roy's games, and if they wanted to save them for a sequel, because that's what supposedly they're hinting at, I don't know why we can't just have them added, and then they just get a bigger focus in the sequel. I don't understand what the big deal is. But even if it's not them, even if we just get, like, Hector, because, you know, he's from Lin's game, and if we get, like, Alm, because he's from Salika's game, and maybe we get, like, Ephraim. You know, because, I mean, I know, like, yeah, they might want to... Because, I mean... Sacred Stones probably isn't quite as big deal as, you know, Roy and Ike's games, because Roy and Ike are very iconic. But Sacred Stones, I think you can't slip a character like him or Erica in there, you know, like, come on. But we'll see what happens, and, you know, I am overall enjoying the game, and I hope other people are as well. Um, or still, I guess, you know, cause it's not like it's a super new game now. I'm just hoping it's doing well to get a sequel and more DLC, and I'm hoping they try a lot harder in the future, because, you know, the game is good, I just think... They just made some really stupid decisions with it. I I feel like Hyrule Warriors kind of it like it, I don't think it's quite as good, but it also pissed me off less. If that makes any sense. Uh, like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you dislike it. Um, don't forget to check out Mark VR in the description below. As I always say, keep it sticky. Stay, stay creepy. Thanks for watching. Stay powered up. Peace.